Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Mountain Blade Bannerlord and I'm going to be doing the Ultimate Mounted Archer Build Guide. And so uh, I've already done a Trader Guide and a Footman Archer Guide, but now we're going to be looking at the best skills and loadout and build and troops and all that sort of stuff for if you want to be a mounted archer, so a, a person who uses a bow on horseback. Uh, before we get into all of that, these videos take a tremendous amount of work and research and uh, time to edit and all that sort of stuff. So if you could, it'd be great if you could like the the video and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel uh, and then the cherry on top or maybe whipped cream in your case uh, would be just a real nice comment down in the comment section to help with the algorithm but with all that in mind let's just dive on in and I'll show you how to start off by building your character so we're gonna want to start off in sandbox and then just because if we're going for mounted archers there's really only two options that being the Azurai or the Kuzates we're gonna go with the Kuzates just because I think they've got the best bonuses for this type of playthrough so you can see down here recruiting and upgrading mounted troops is 10% cheaper that right off the bat is enough of an advantage for this type of playthrough to make me want to choose the Kusates. but we also get a 25 percent bonus uh production bonus to horse mule cow and sheep in villages owned by Kuzate rulers so the more successful your Kuzates are and like the more villages that produce horses they have the more availability of horses you personally will have because you know you can help make them successful and govern villages and then you get that 25 percent production bonus the only downside is 20 percent less tax income from town so if you're playing as a Kuzate, don't focus as much on tax income focus on tariff income or trade or smithing or whatever uh you won't be able to rely on quite as good of an income from taxes so yes i start with the kuzates as for uh all of the family choices to make they will be as follows so we're going to start with uh you were born into a family of tribes people this will give you 10 skill levels and one focus point to bow and riding which are both things that we want to focus on and an attribute point to control which is going to help us level up bow as a child you were noted for your your attention to detail is what we're going to want to go with. This is going to give us 10 skill levels and one focus point to both athletics and bow. So again, we're going to have another one for bow. Athletics isn't as important, but it never hurts. And we will get that attribute point to control. So another thing helping us level up our bow skill. Uh, like all village children, you helped out in the fields. You also hunted small game is going to be what we're going to want to focus on here. This will give you 10 skill levels and one focus point to bow and tactics and one attribute point to control. So we get another attribute point in control, bringing us up to five another focus point in bow and of course it never hurts to have a little bit of a boost in tactics right off the bat as a youngster growing up in calradia war was never too far away you Road with the Scouts. This one's an obvious choice because it plays perfectly into what we're doing. We get 10 skill levels and one focus point to riding and bow. Again, the areas that we most want to focus on. And an attribute point to endurance, which is going to help us ride, uh, level up our riding skill. So, obvious choice there. Before you set out uh, for a life of adventure, your biggest achievement was... You hunted a dangerous animal. This one doesn't play as well into it but uh, if i'm playing as a mounted archer the melee weapon i like to focus on is pole arms i get a nice swinging pole arm because they're very very effective on horseback and you spend most of your time on horseback if you're playing as a mounted archer so i like that we get a focus point there i also like that we get an extra point for our control so that helps us level up that even more even if it wastes our uh, our focus point on crossbow instead of bow but we do get that extra one for control and again pole arm so both of those are good things and then your character started off on the adventuring path at the age of you could start at 20 but then you'll be a baby-faced loser with uh, less stuff to start i like to start at the age of 30 which gives us those four unspent focus points and two unspent attribute points and again i like to start off in banner lord difficulty just because it's the most fun and so starting off with all of those choices we will you'll see we have two attribute points we can use and four focus points we can use i'm going to finish off bow with one of those i'm going to pop these the rest of these uh well, I'll pop two of them into riding and then one more into polearm just so we can level ourselves up freely. You can see that we can make a choice in bow right away. And we have two unused attribute points. We're going to use one of those in control, bringing us up to seven, because that brings us up to the, uh, well, the skill limit of level uh, 210. And we're going to use the other one in endurance to make it a little bit easier to level up riding, because those are our main focus areas. So uh, as a basic skill level, level overview, if you follow all of the choices I've made thus far, you start out with two for vigor, seven for control, four for endurance, two for cunning, two for social, and two for intelligence then skill layout we have 10 for polearm 40 for bow 10 for crossbow 20 for riding 10 for athletics and 10 for tactics and of course uh, for our focus points two in polearm 
five in bow, one in crossbow, four in riding, one in athletics, and one in tactics. So that is how you will start off if you've made all the choices that I showed you here. Now let's jump to a save I have of much later in a game where I followed all of these choices, and I'll show you how to distribute your points uh, elsewhere. All right, and so opening it up, you can see we're at level 43, so nothing crazy, but definitely quite high level, uh, as this is significantly further into the game. And our first area that we're going to focus on are our bow skills, which we've got maxed out here. So the first one you want to focus on is bow control. Decreases your bow accuracy loss due to movement by 30%. Bow equipped troops in your formation gain 5% damage with bows. Both of those are very useful, makes your bow equipped troops more useful, and it makes uh, your accuracy due to movement lower. And since you're going to be riding around on a horse moving all the time, that's definitely useful. Our second one at level 50 is Bodkin. This one uh, says your attacks with bows ignore 10% of enemy's armor, and bow equipped troops in your formation ignore 5% of enemy's armor. This will just make your troops more effective because their arrows will not be stopped by the enemy armor quite so much so that's useful at level 75 we do quick adjustments this one says decreases your bow accuracy loss due to rotating by 50 percent troops in your formation gave five percent accuracy with bows so this will make your troops more accurate but more importantly it helps you with that accuracy loss due to rotating on horseback as a horse horse archer you do a lot of rotating you know, that you swivel to try to aim at targets as you're riding past. So quick adjustments is absolutely necessary to be a good mounted archer. Then at level 100, we have the mounted archery skill, which should be pretty obvious here. Decreases mounted archery penalties by 30% while using a bow. Range troops in governed settlements garrison provide 20% more security. So both of those are, I guess, important. The second one's not nearly as important. But obviously, uh, decreasing that mounted accuracy penalty by 30% is huge. So that's very effective. Then at level 125, we're going to go with strong bows which increases your damage with bows by eight percent and it uh gives you a five percent damage boost with your bows for any tier three plus troops in your formation which obviously you should be aiming for so it'll make them more effective and it makes your bow more more effective at level 150 we want hunter clan which increases your damage against mounts with bows by 30 percent this is great because playing as a mounted archer one of the best strategies is to take out the enemy cavalry first because if the enemy doesn't have cavalry or mounted skirmishers to fight against you with and you have an army of mounted skirmishers there's basically nothing they can do you're going to ride around the outside and pick off their troops until they're all dead uh, so if you guys are more effective against their mounts you can take out their cavalry even quicker so it, this will increase your damage against mounts by 30 percent which is great and it lowers your garrison maintenance cost by 15 percent which is also great at level 175 we're going to want to go with eagle eye that'll give us a 50 percent zoom boost uh, when you're aiming with your bows and it will also increase your seeing range on the campaign map by 10%. At level 200, we want to go with Renowned Archer, which increases the morale of ranged troops in your party at the beginning of the battle by 10%. Since, obviously, you're doing an army of mounted archers, those are ranged troops, and so you get that, uh, morale boost and your ranged troops are 30% cheaper to recruit and upgrade, so that's just gonna make it cheaper and easier to lead an army of of mounted archers uh then at level 225 it's really up to you since you're a uh, mounted archer you might want to go with horse master just because that will allow you to use any type of bow on horseback and since like four of the best five bows in the game are long bows that you can't normally use on horseback i can understand going at this one and that's why i did it here even though my character is equipped with the single best bow in the game which can be used on horseback by default uh, so either you can use a step recurve bow or war bow until you get the noble uh, bow and just make do with that. And if you do that, then I definitely recommend going with deep quivers because it gives you and all of your troops extra arrows. Uh, but if you don't have the patience for that or you just can't get your hands on the noble bow, but you do have a noble longbow and you just want to use it on horseback, then go with horse master. Finally, at level 250, we have quick draw, which just makes aiming with your bow 25% faster. So obviously a an advantage there and it's going to make you a lot faster faster with your bow and of course this one isn't a choice but it is important the dead shot perk uh so every skill point above 200 and you can see we're at level 330 so that's 130 skill points uh gives you a, an increase of 0.2 percent for speed and 0.5 percent for damage so definitely uh really really useful to max out the bow skill once you've gotten this because it makes your bows a lot faster and makes you deal a lot more damage with them so that is 
All of these skills I like to focus on as a mounted archer are those ones that I just showed you. We have a couple skills for riding that I also like to focus on though. So the first one is the very first at level 25, Nimble Steed. This increases your maneuvering by 10% and mounted troops in your formation gain 30 per, uh, plus 30 riding skill. So this will make your cavalry troops more effective, but more importantly, it makes it easier for you to maneuver, uh, which is important as a mounted archer. The charge damage really isn't that important as a mounted archer since you really shouldn't be charging your horse into the enemy uh, you do want that increased maneuverability though so the nimble steed is something to focus on the next one is the level 100 perk sagittarius this decreases accuracy penalty by 15 percent while you're mounted so this is going to make your bow significantly more accurate and it does the same thing for any mounted troops in your formation so all of your uh, mounted archers that you're leading into battle are also going to have a accuracy penalty decrease of 15%. So Sagittarius is very important. Next up at level 150, we have the Horse Archer skill, which increases your range damage by 10% while mounted, and it gives a 5% uh, damage boost for all of the mounted archers in your formation. So again, very useful. It makes your bow that much more effective on horseback, which, you know, as a mounted archer, you definitely want. Next, at level 200 for riding, we have Annoying Buzz, which is a, uh, says you cause 20% more battle morale penalty with range skills while mounted. Since you are a mounted archer, that's what all of your range skills are going to be, so it's excellent to be able to inflict that much more of a morale penalty to your enemy, so I think that works excellently. And again, it does the same thing for your troops, so any kills they get, uh, at range while mounted causes 5% more ba uh, morale battle penalty to the enemy. So Annoying Buzz is definitely a great perk for a mounted archer leading an army of mounted archers. Then at level 225, we have Cavalry Tactics, which says Cavalry Troop Volunteering Rate is increased by 30% in towns your clan governs, and mounted troops have 50% reduced wages in governed settlements. This is going to make your troops cheaper to maintain and easier to recruit uh, for any towns that you govern. So it's a useful perk. Then uh, finally at level 250 for riding, we have the Tough Steed perk, which increases your mount's armor by 20%. Anytime you're planning on being a cavalry troop in the game, like you personally, Tough Steed is good to go because it's going to help your steed not get killed out from under you quite so frequently. So uh, those are all of the perks that I recommend uh, focusing on for being a mounted archer in this game. That being said, obviously high scouting and tactics are going to be a great advantage. Leadership's going to help you lead more troops. Uh, charm has its advantages here and there and you're going to want to have at least some form of backup weapon in melee and I like to focus on the pole arms and then I'll have like a Ramphaya or a glaive or something like that uh, to use on horseback because it's very effective and if you do that there's a couple skills like cavalry and lancer and uh, swift swing those are good to use the sure-footed perk, things like that are going to make your polearm that much more effective on horseback. So those are all of the skills to keep in mind for making a overpowered mounted archer character in this game. If you want to go for mounted archer units to build your army with, the three best ones in the game in order from worst to best are the Imperial Bucellari, which is the, uh, it's from the regular Imperial recruits and you recruit them down to the archer, trained archer, veteran archer, down to the Bucellari. It is just a standard mounted archer troop. They've got decent armor, a pretty good bow, two quivers of arrows, decent horse. They make a good mounted archer troop. So that's the third best. The second best mounted archers in the game are the Azurai Mamluk Heavy Cavalry. These ones, again, you're going to start with the Azurai Recruit, go down to the Soldier, then you're going to need horses to upgrade them to the Mamluk Regular, Mamluk Cavalry, and Mamluk Heavy Cavalry. But once you get there, they're a really good unit. They uh, are balanced, so unfortunately they don't have two quivers of arrows, but they do have the piercing arrows, so they deal high damage, and they have the step recurve bow, which is one of the best uh, bows you can use on horseback in the game. And they also have a sword and shield, so they can work relatively well as a regular cavalry unit or uh, infantry troop on foot. So the Azurai Mamluk Heavy Cavalry are very balanced. They've got good armor, a really solid horse, good weapons, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, they are the second best mounted archers in the game. And then, of course, at the number one spot for the best mounted archers in the game, we have the Kuzate Khans Guard. These ones are the Noble Troop Tree. And so if you want to recruit noble Kuzate troops. You just have to go to villages that are bound to Kuzate castles, and that is where you'll be able to recruit the noble troop tree. And then you just upgrade them up to the Kuzate Khans Guard, which have great skills. They come equipped with the glaive, so they also have the pole arm as their backup weapon, and they will come equipped with the step recurve bow and two quivers of step arrows. So they've got plenty of arrows, a great bow, an excellent horse, solid armor, uh, really good stats, and good weapons. So 
Uh, the Kuzik Khan's Guard are definitely the best mounted archers in the game, and if you have a full army of them, you can defeat pretty much any army anywhere. Uh, even a full army of Batanian Fine Champions doesn't stand up to the Kuzik Khan's Guard, unless you're in, like, densely forested terrain. And just to uh, show you quick, so you don't think I'm making it all up or whatever, uh, or didn't explain it, if you want to find villages to recruit the Noble Troop Tree, you go to any Kuzik Castle from their base territory, and you just hover over it, it'll tell you the bound villages. Here we have Erzanur and Garadin, so Garadin's right here. And Erzanur is down here, so farther away from the castle, but so that's how you do it. You just go to the go to any Kuzate castle and then you look for where their bound villages are and you go to them and you can recruit the noble troop trees and upgrade them. So as far as getting the troops and which troops are the best to go with, that's how you do it. As far as equipment that you're gonna want to use, uh, the three best bows for this type of character assuming that you're not just going to use the longbow and use the Berg to allow yourself to use the longbow. The three best bows in order from worst to best are the Step Recurve Bow, the Step War Bow, and the Noble Bow, which is the best one. Uh, if you can get your hands on that, it's the obvious choice uh, because it's just really, really good for a bow. Uh, the best horses to use uh, as any cavalry troop, but in this case specifically a, uh, a mounted archer, are the in order from worst to best for the top three, the Wadar Hotblood, the Batanian Thoroughbred, and the Asiligat. I have the Wadar Hotblood here because I haven't gotten a Batanian Thoroughbred or a Silagat yet in this playthrough. But uh, any of those horses are top tier best horses in the game, so uh, that's what you want to go for. And then the three best types of arrows you can get in the game are the Stacked Step Arrows at number 3, Stacked Bodkin Arrows at number 2, and the Piercing Arrows at number 1. Here you can see we have two uh, quivers of Stacked Bodkin Arrows. Uh, they have three pierce instead of four pierce like the piercing arrows, so they deal slightly less damage, but we get the trade-off of having 32 arrows per quiver. So with two quivers here, I can have a melee weapon, which I have the Ramphaya as my melee weapon, and I still have 64 arrows to use uh, before I run out of ammo. So, excellent loadout if you have enough mounted troops that are going to you know, equate to a full army, you can defeat pretty much enemy, any enemy army in the game uh, with this build. So that is how to do the ultimate best mounted archer in the game. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it useful. But that's all for today. Hope you subscribe to the channel, but we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.